I'm going to talk to you about similar figures and what it means for figures to be similar. It's a little more detailed than maybe you learned in elementary school. Um, it's a little bit more than just two shapes um, of different size, and they could be similar. Um, there's more to it. And um, so I'm going to talk to you about that, and then I'm going to talk to you about how to find the missing side. If, um, if you are given the links and you, to, you know two figures are similar, you can find a missing link, or you can prove that two shapes are similar. Um, so first, just to review what similar figures are. By definition, shapes are similar if they're the same shape, but they are different size. But they need to be proportional to each other, meaning they need to be, um, the sides need to be multiplied by the same number or divided by the same number. Um, there needs to be that consistency there. Um, another thing is, another quick way to do it too, is look at the angle measures. For example, we have two triangles here, they are of different size but they are not similar. So you cannot just assume if it's the same shape, different sizes, that they're automatically similar. These two triangles are not similar to each other. Um, this one, and, and, and for all these examples that I'm giving you, just go with what I've labeled the units or the measurements as. Don't go by what exactly you think they are, meaning this may not be exactly 30 degrees. I'm just kind of giving it a measurement, okay? Um, so, um, so if this side's 45 degrees, this is 45 degrees and 90 degrees, these are not the same angle measures here in this triangle. When shapes are similar, they have the same angle measures. Um, the corresponding angles are the same. Um, here are two rectangles, okay? And I'm telling you that they are similar, okay? Um, and with a rectangle, by definition, all angles are 90 degrees, so I'm not even going to worry about the angle measure here. But I'm going to look at the sides, okay? And... Um, one way to determine or to find the missing angle measure or the missing side length is to set up a proportion. And I think the easiest way to do that is to color code the sides just so that you can kind of see what sides correspond to each other. So for example, this side is 3 meters, this side is X, okay? Um, and let me just, let me set that up right here. And then this side is 7, and this side is 15. So these are the two sides that correspond to each other. The reason I did that is because it really helps me setting up a proportion to find out what this missing length is right here, okay? And so here I've got my yellow. Well, I've got 3 over x. Notice I went from little rectangle to big rectangle. That's the same thing as, I'm going to go from little rectangle to big rectangle here, which is 7 over 15. So 3 over x is equal to 7 over 15. Once I have this, I can cross multiply and divide because this is now a proportion and the way we solve for the missing variable is to cross multiply and then divide. So 3 times 15 is 45. 7 times x is 7x. I'm going to divide both sides by 7, and 45 divided by 7. 7 goes into 45 six times, and I have a remainder of 3. So we can call this 6 and 3 sevenths. Um, if, if the directions are not specific as to whether you need to give your, fra your answer as a fraction or a decimal, it doesn't matter to me which way you give it, a fraction is perfectly fine here. So since we got 6 and 3 sevenths, that means that this is 6 and 3 sevenths meters long. If this side's 15, this is 6 and 3 sevenths, this side's 7 and this side's 3. So um, whatever you multiply 7 by to get 15, that's the same thing you multiply 3 by to get 6 and 3 sevenths. That's that consistency that I'm talking about, that proportionality. Um, I like to think of it too as if, if you if you made this shape on uh, on Microsoft Word, a rectangle shape, and you wanted it larger, you would have to click on the corner and drag it at the corner. That keeps it proportional. If um, it's not proportional, then you're just clicking on one side and just dragging one side and either making it skinnier or fatter or something. But drawing on that corner is what keeps it proportional. Both sides are changing by the same factor. Okay. Um, so let's use an example here of triangles. Um, here, I've given you three measurements. Um, you just need to pick two to help you find this missing measurement right here. And it doesn't, again, it doesn't matter which one as long as you're being consistent, okay? So I'm going to go with this is six, 
and this corresponds to this side which is 11 meters and then across the bottom I've got X here and then I've got 18 oh, I'm so sorry that looks awful um, I've got 18 meters here so those two sides correspond with each other now that's gonna help me because I can set up my proportion that's why the only reason I color code it is just to help me set up my proportion okay and so again we're gonna stick with our being consistent 6 over 11 is equal to since I went from little triangle to big triangle for the yellow I need to go from little triangle to big triangle on the green so that's going to be equal to x over 18 now I can solve this by cross multiplying and this one's going to be a little bit of work because the numbers you know it's hard to do these in your head um, 11 times x is 11 x I'm gonna write it down here is equal to 6 times 18 if you're not sure what something is just multiply it over here off to the side and you I get 108 so now I can solve by dividing both sides by 11 and I'm gonna have to do a little bit of division over here sorry the computer makes the numbers kinda go together sometimes okay um, 11 into 108 it goes in 9 times I get 99 I subtract and I get 9 so my answer is 9 and 9 11 and that's okay um, unless you're specifically told to give the answer as a decimal but if not you can just tell me that this side is 9 and 9 11 meters long and that's proportional so that therefore these are similar figures okay now this also works this isn't you know a, a standard shape that you're used to um, but we can still do it the exact same way. Uh, this side, this four inches, hold on, I lost something, uh, corresponds with the X over here. And then here we've got this two corresponds with this six. Okay, so now I'm going to set up my proportion. For yellow, I've got 4 over x is equal to 2 over 6. Since I went from little to small on the yellow, I need to go from, I mean, I'm sorry, if I went from little to large on the yellow, I need to go from little to large or small to large on the, bit, on the green. So that's 2 over 6. So now I'm going to cross multiply. 2x is equal to 4 times 6, which is 24. And I'm going to divide both sides by 2. And I get x is equal to 12. So that means this side is equal to 12 inches. Now you could have also figured it out and thought and seen and noticed the relationship that 2 times 2 is 4. So this is going to be 6 times 2, which is 12. That's another way of doing it. Um, but sometimes they don't always work out that nice and easily. So that's why it's just a good habit to start cross multiplying. Um, so this side is 12 inches. Now, just to um, to go back and cover something that I said in the very beginning, angle measures are consistent. So if this is 90 degrees right here, that means this is 90 degrees over here. With similar figures, the angles don't change. Angle measures don't change. If this is 45 degrees over here, this angle, that corresponds to this angle right here, which is 45 degrees. Um, if this angle right here is 60 degrees, that corresponds to this angle right here, which is 60 degrees. So just realize that there there's that consistency there. Okay?